Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. Let's talk some mountain weather. First up is going to be radar because I want to set the table here. So this is our final storm system of the cycle and you can kind of see what's going on. It's slowly dropping down through the Rockies and eventually will be working its way into Utah, Colorado and the rest of Wyoming. But uh, we've got snow there in Montana this morning, Idaho and a little bit kind of overrunning the Tetons. And because of that, we did see snow accumulation over the last 24 hours. This is Jackson Hole. We've had a good stretch. We've made up some ground. I mean, it's not perfect, but five, this is at the summit in the last 24 hours, three at Mid Mountain. Um, but this is important. 202 now at the summit. So you finally cracked the 200 inch mark at the top of uh, Jackson Hole there, rendezvous. 138 at Mid Mountain temperatures. Yeah, freezing at the base, so a little bit on the warm side there, but uh, it should be a good day. Now, I showed you Jackson Hole. I got to show you uh, Jay Peak. So here's the view. Snowing again, right? What a surprise. This has been the year of Jay Peak. Um, I want to draw you, your attention to this in their report. So... So far, this season, they're at 240 inches of snow. I, I think, and I, I don't know this for sure, but from what I have been able to check, this is the most of any resort, any major ski resort in the lower 48. I'm sure there's some backcountry areas that have that have had more out west, but that is just absolutely incredible. They have led the pack almost from the beginning and, and are still there. Okay, let me show you satellite. So this is a water vapor. Here's our dip, here's our trough, and our final storm system spinning on shore. So again, th the track of this will take it down and through the Rockies over the next couple of days. So today, the 8th, and into the 9th. That that's the final piece that has to slide through before high pressure comes in, 110 through 115. And that's going to be a significant area of high pressure that will change will change the complexion of things out west for sure. Um, let me show you the, uh, the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time today. There's our low. There's your snow increasing across um, the Tetons. You've got snow starting to drop down into Utah at this point. All right, let me move this ahead. Uh, there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. At that point, it does look like there's snow moving in to the Wasatch. It's definitely there overnight. Um, so here's 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Thursday. You've got snow in Colorado, still some snow over the Wasatch and the High Uintas, the Tetons. Move ahead. There's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard. Now there's 5 p.m. By 5 p.m., snow is much lighter and tapering off uh, across the Wasatch. Snow continues in the mountains of Colorado. In fact, by, by Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, we're probably going to pick up some light accumulations across Denver uh, and the I-25 corridor. And you can see it happening right there through late. You can see it across most of uh, the Denver area. Now, on the back side of this, there's some residual moisture coming down on this west-northwest flow through Montana, Idaho, and the Pacific Northwest. Storm exits. So this is 8 a.m. Mountain Standard on Friday. Uh, this is, let me take you into 5 a.m. So there's 5 a.m. on Saturday mountain standard and this last little piece of energy riding that west northwest flow is there and it may kink the central and northern mountains of Colorado with a little bit of snow uh, and there we are there's 11 a.m. on Saturday mountain standard now at this point high pressure is really starting to build in and take over behind all of this energy and it's going to be there for a while in fact here are my bullet points all the nitty-gritty. One final storm system. Today, tomorrow, and one night. Then a high-pressure dome builds in 110 through 115, warmer, drier conditions. The pattern that takes hold, and I've had some questions on this, what's going to happen after this high pressure? Because, 
you know, large ski season, water, the water supply out west depends on what happens. It's been such a tough start. Well, it does turn active again on or after 116, but there's definitely an asterisk to this. It looks like there's going to be an eastern periphery or a north-northwest type of flow that comes down and favors Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, leaving most of the areas west of that dry. I'll show you that pattern coming up. It'll be very obvious. We talked about the year of Jay Peak. Here's the 15-day snow forecast as I see it. About an inch at Mammoth, a foot at Vail. Snow mass about 15, Park City 7-ish, and Alta at about 14. Here are your best odds of accumulating snow, all the, all the dates for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Interior, BC. So for example, in Colorado, 1-8 into the morning of 1-9, moderate snow accumulations. Morning of 1-14, light as the north-northwest flow comes down, and then another light shot, afternoon, evening, 15 into 16. Now in Utah, you only have one shot because you're going to be out of the flow after this. And it's the afternoon, evening of 1.7 into the morning of 1.8, moderate to heavy accumulations. Tahoe, only one shot, 1.7 light. And then it's a long, dry stretch. So I won't go through all the dates, but you get the idea. Here's the time height. Three-day forecast for Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, you start here, that's current, and you move in this direction into the future three days. And I like what I'm seeing. You're looking at a slice through the atmosphere. This is a good green tower coming. There's your moisture. So that's essentially the 8th, very late 7, but on the 8th, mainly the 8th, through the start of the 9th. And that's when the bulk of this moisture and lift, and there's a bit of lift, coming through. So we could see several inches of accumulation. I mean, based on what I see here, that's a pretty decent lift over the top of some of these high peaks. And that's at Breckenridge. Let me show you uh, atmospheric pressure anomalies. So this is Friday 1-9. This is when the, the actual trough or dip in the whole pattern and the jet comes through the Rockies. So that'll be a good day. It'll be colder. Now by 114, this is way down the road. Big high pressure. These are much higher than normal pressures sitting across the west. Your pattern has a massive ridge and everything of consequence will be spilling down in this sort of fashion. So whatever energy is there will be using this pathway. On 116, now here's the transition point. Big high pressure, but look what's happened. This north-northwest flow has established itself. So let me redraw that. That was kind of crooked. So when it comes down, it's mainly going to look like this. So whatever energy is coming out of Canada will spill down like this. So potentially on 116 and thereafter, what's favored is areas right here. It's favored. So what you've got is Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. We could see the energy uh, in some accumulation as a result of this pattern. Now, that largely leaves Utah, Idaho, uh, the Pacific Northwest, California out of it. If that happens, let me show you what AI thinks. Here's the contrast or comparison, if you will. So I showed you the operational. Here's AI. And it's kind of similar. It's not exactly the same. But it does have this north-northwest flow coming down. It's, it's really close. But both of them have some agreement on that. We'll keep an eye on that. That's way out there. Um, here's total precipitation. This is over the next eight, nine days. Initially, there's a good shot of moisture with this final storm across a lot of the inner mountain. But then after that, the pattern kind of moves back to the north. And, and there's not a lot after 1.9 through the interior. You know, that's high pressure 110 through 115. 
10 to 1 snow, again, most of this happens over the next two or three days. Uh, deep purple's at least six inches, bright pink's at least a foot. The white is at least two feet. So the whites start to contract uh, and move back to the north. Um, and they move away. And then you can kind of see on the last few frames, a lot of the snow accumulation starts to come down through here uh, on this line and also north. So that'll be an interesting pattern. And unfortunately, it leaves a lot of the west out of it. Here's total precipitation, eight or nine days here uh, for the southwest. Again, the majority of this happens over the next two or three days. And then it's much, much drier. Um, here's, my, here's my forecast. So all of today through the end of the ninth. So basically, these are totals by the close of business on 1-9. So barely anything for California. The Pacific Northwest, there are some places that do pretty well, um, maybe 10 to 20 inches. Uh, Stevens, Baker seem to do okay, Alieska. Uh, and then looking in the interior, I've got four to six through Snow Basin, Powder Mountain, Park City, Deer Valley. And potentially eight to ten up here through Solitude, Brighton, Alta, and Snowbird. Four at Bryan and four at Arizona Snowball. Now in Colorado, there's definitely a bit of a heavier preference here across parts of the western slope. Steamboat down to Aspen, Snowmass, Crested Butte, Powderhorn. But quite a bit less, roughly, as you go Vail East into Summit County and up to the Continental Divide, four, five, six up there. And then look at these numbers down here. Uh, through New Mexico, 6 to 12 potentially down there. Love seeing that. Probably 6 to 8 inches up here through the Tetons, a lot of Idaho, and potentially four, five, three, four, five, six inches in Montana. And then uh, decent numbers at uh, Revelstoke, but quite a bit less everywhere else. Okay, so that's period one. Here's period two. This is 110 through 116. So again, there's 17 through 19, 110 through 116. And notice how the pattern shifts to favor the eastern periphery. In other words, right down through here. Most of the snow is on or to the east, northeast of this line because that's where the energy is running down through. So in some of these areas could be halfway decent. I mean, you're looking at Three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inches there, right on top of the sort of veil steamboat line and east, um, and a little bit there through uh, Wyoming and Montana, and also up here into uh, BC, and some dropping into Whistler Blackcomb, and quite a bit in Alieska as the whole pattern contracts and sort of bends to the north around that high pressure. In the northeast, it's two or three clippers. Over the next eight or nine days, uh, deep purple is at least six. Bright pink would be at least a foot. And there's definitely at least a foot up here around Tremblant. And just about there over the top of J Peak. Here are my numbers. So through the close of 116, and there it is, 16 over Tremblant, a foot over J, 10 at Mount Washington, 10 at Snow Ridge, and then everybody else, uh, three to maybe six, seven, eight inches. But decent. Decent. I mean, the big numbers keep coming for Jay. It just doesn't seem to stop. Um, okay, one last look at the West. Next few days. Um, looking good. You're looking for powder. Go to the Wasatch. Go to Western Colorado. Go to the Tetons. Um, those will all be good areas. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.